Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Player Mouse. A muzzle brake is a device that goes on the end of a gun that utilizes the normally wasted uh, propellant gases and redirects them out the side or top or wherever to reduce the recoil. Now Mike Dittman recently contacted me about making a muzzle brake for me, but the problem is I didn't have any firearms with a threaded muzzle, so I thought, what about a shotgun muzzle brake? And what about designing a muzzle brake that uses an interference fit or a shrink fit to attach it to the barrel? I submitted this design to Mike and say, hey, can you make this? Let's see if this will work. I don't think anyone's ever made a muzzle brake that um, was held on just by an interference fit before. Now he quickly machined it and sent it to me and I was really happy with the design. I like the double cut design that he came up with. Many of the shotgun muzzle brake designs that I saw were big and bulky and cl actually clamped onto the barrel with screws. This design is about as simple as you can get. No screws, no fasteners, no welding. So simpler is usually better, which equates to lower costs, lower weight, and simpler installation. The brake only weighs 3.1 ounces. Actually, I thought it'd be a lot heavier than that, but you can see here how much of the metal we removed from the thing. I added a little bit of Loctite to the end of the barrel. I wasn't sure if this was necessary or not. It was just for my own peace of mind. And then I took my torch and heated up the muzzle brake. Now I could have put it in the oven. I could have heated it up on the stove. There's a lot of ways to heat up something without a torch. This brake was machined about two thousandths of an inch smaller than the OD of the barrel. So heating it up will expand it out. I wanted to keep the bead side on my shotgun so I had to mill a little slot to compensate for it. That also helps you align the muzzle brake perfectly. Once the muzzle brake cools off, it's going to shrink back down to its original dimensions and clamp very firmly onto the end of the muzzle. The discoloration can be buffed out with a Scotch-Brite or steel wool. I opted to just cold blue it. It's real simple to use, inexpensive, but you can paint it or uh, do whatever you want as far as finish for your muzzle brake. Next we'll test it out. We'll actually shoot through it and see if the muzzle brake actually stays on there. In order to demonstrate how much of the propellant gases are coming out of the slots of the muzzle brake, we have this very high-tech device here. It's half of a toilet paper tube and we'll slip it over the end of the muzzle brake. And then we'll be shooting a 12 gauge wax slug through it. I'd say so. It just shreds it. Yeah. We definitely see a lot of energy coming out of those ports of the muzzle brake. Normally all those gases would go straight forward and because you can blast them out of the side it kind of nullifies them and reduces the recoil. You'll never eliminate all the recoil, but you can definitely reduce it with using a device like this. We shot about, oh, 20, 25 rounds through this muzzle brake, various loads, and never had any issues. The muzzle brake never moved at all. It stayed firmly attached. In this shot, we get some good muzzle flashes out of it. They're very uniform, uh, almost exactly what you saw in those tank shots, um, just on a smaller scale. Originally, Mike just wanted me to film one of his muzzle brakes uh, in exchange for the muzzle brake. But I thought it would be a better deal for him if I was to give something back to him. So we kind of came up with this muzzle brake design and it works great. And instead of just some video, you know, maybe I can send him some business. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these, check out his channel page. I don't think he has a website yet. And I'm sure he'll also be coming up with newer, maybe improved designs to this design. But if you're interested in, in a muzzle brake for your shotgun, um, I think he said something like this is about $75, which is a pretty good price. The bigger, bulkier clamp-on units that I saw other people selling were upwards of $200 plus. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.